All right, hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar series brought to you by IronFX, where we'll be covering breaking news and setups. Uh, let's just wait for a minute uh, for everyone to start tuning in, and then we'll get on our way. I right, do take note, uh, we've got the Q&A and uh, chat windows open as well. So do drop your questions at any point during the webinar. Do not hesitate to ask me any questions at any point uh, for today's session. All right, hi, Mike, good to see you. All right, okay, just I want to make sure you guys can hear me loud and clear and see my screen as well, which should be showing you uh, IonFX webinar series breaking news and setups. All right. Okay. If um, right. If there's no, if everything's good on the audio visual, uh, check. Then we'll could, we'll get uh, we'll get the webinar series underway. All right. So before we start off, uh, do take note of the risk warning that comes with uh, trading CFDs and forex. Right. So the products or the effects are traded on margin and carry a high level of risk, and it is possible to lose all your capital. These products may not be suitable for everyone and you should ensure that you understand the risks involved. And also do take note of the disclaimer. Uh, the information in this webinar should, be, should not be considered investment advice or an investment recommendation, but instead educational material only. Right? The material is just a personal opinion of the author. The client's investment objectives and risk tolerance have not been considered. All right, let's just uh, start kick things off. Okay, so my name is Ketan Ramachandra. I'm uh, yeah, an investment analyst here at Everest Fortune Group. So this webinar series is brought to you in a special partnership between INFX and Everest Fortune Group, where we've been the finalists for best FX and equity research for the following years, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Right, okay, so just a simple agenda for today. We're going to look at um, the key events or news events have taken place this week. So we had a big one yesterday, which was U.S. inflation data, U.S. CPI data, which came out yesterday. And of course, we've got a big monetary policy uh, meeting coming up in a couple of hours uh, in the Eurozone. And then we also have U.S. PPI data and unemployment claims coming up later today as well. All right. So we'll go through, we'll cover these data points, and we can see how the CPI data had impacted markets yesterday. And we can also see potentially what, the ECB will do with regards to its main financing rate and how will uh, Pre President Christine Lagarde, how could she potentially move currency markets during her press conference as well. All right. And then we'll also look at what is US PPI uh, and what are un unemployment claims and how could they potentially move markets later this evening as well. All right. Okay. First of all, uh, U.S. CPI data, which is Consumer Price Index, was released yesterday at um, 12.30 p.m. GMT time. Right, So here we are. We have the chart for the headline CPI and the core CPI. So as you can see, since um, middle of 2022, headline CPI has been retreating very sharply, so that's great news. But unfortunately, over the last two months, uh, that means for July and August, the readings have, have edged higher. So in June, we had headline CPI falling to 3% on an annualized basis. So that's year over year. But in July, this increased to 3.2%. And for August, uh, which was the data which was released yesterday, August data was released yesterday, came in at 3.7% year over year, which is higher than the forecast of 3.6%. So clearly, we are starting to see inflation starting to uh, pick up again in the US, and this could be concerning and could also... This is concerning for the Federal Reserve, and also this could potentially uh, function as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index as well as demand for the US dollar could pick up once more as inflation increases, and that means the Federal Reserve may need to continue uh, keeping rates elevated if they don't raise continue to raise them. Here on the right, this chart on the right, we see uh, the core inflation rate so this core inflation rate excludes food and energy. So as you can see, this, this uh, index has not been retreating as quickly 
or as sharply as the headline reading. Uh, so this is because of the services sector as well as uh, the shelter sector that make up this basket. So th th this two components in general have taken a longer time to uh, ease. So that is why you see the core inflation uh, reading being remaining elevated. And as we can see, we can probably call it being stubbornly sticky, but it's only in the last three to four months where it's actually started to uh, fall quite steadily right now. Okay, now this is a concern because this could mean that uh, with the FOMC meeting coming up next week, although the Federal Reserve uh, has indicated that they are very likely to maintain rates at next week's meeting, given the recent uptick in US inflation data, it should come as no surprise uh, should the uh, Federal Reserve raise interest rates again next week. All right, now moving on to uh, today as well. Okay, maybe we'll jump into Forex Factory and you can see the economic calendar as well. All right, okay, let's just go on to Forex Factory now. All right, I'm on GMT time. So as you can see, uh, yesterday, Wednesday, 13th of September, we had CPI data come out. So the annualized basis is what we we're looking at just now. So you could see that the forecast was 3.6%, but the actual reading came out a little bit higher than the forecast. So inflation is really starting to pick up once more. It came in at 3.7% in August, and in July, it was 3.2%. All right, and coming up in uh, two hours, in about two and a half hours, or rather, in a, yeah, in about just under two and a half hours, we have the ECB uh, announcing their policy statement as well as the main, main refinancing rate as well. So this is their main interest rate, which has been at 4.25% for the last... Uh, uh, meeting or so the last year they've been raising rates at every meeting since uh july of last year but for the first time uh since they started raising rates they could potentially keep rates on hold that means they may pause later on so should they do that and should president lagarde come out relatively neutral in a press conference that's followed uh followed at uh 12 45 p.m gmt we could see the euro potentially sell off, right? Do take note, this would have to mean that uh, the ECB does not increase rates, right? They keep it on hold at 4.25%. And after that, during the press conference, President Christine Lagarde, here she comes up with a relatively neutral outlook that could cause the euro to fall as well. All right. Well, hi, Riaz. Glad you could have joined us as well. All right. So just talking about some of the key uh, events that came up uh, last yesterday, which was US CPI, and also uh, what to look out for today. So we have ECB uh, announcing their monetary policy statement later today. We also have PPI data, retail sales data, and unemployment claims coming out in the US at 12.30 p.m. GMT time. So PPI measures producer price index that measures wholesale inflation, and that has been falling uh, pretty sharply as well, but the recent data has shown it to increase. And unemployment claims have also been falling quite steadily, so that could impact uh, currency markets as well. So moving back to the slides, right, for those uh, who have just joined us, okay, so this is CPI data, so you can see clearly here, headline CPI picking up over the last two months, going from 3% in June to 3.2% in July, and now 3.7% in August. Although core reading has continued to slide lower, but it's still historically high at 4%. Now, the ECB has kept their main refinancing rate or their interest rate at 4.25%, and it's quite likely they may uh, keep rates on hold this time round. Now, part of the reason they could do that is because the headline inflation in the euro area has been falling pretty steadily. It's fallen down to about 5.3% uh, in, Ju in June and July, but it's sort of stagnated here. And also, you can see similarly the core inflation rate remains stubbornly high. It is not falling or retreating as sharply as the headline uh, in, uh, rate. So even though core inflation remains relatively high, we may see the, U, uh, the ECB keep rates at 4.25%. All right. And moving on to EU PMI, which is Purchasing Managers Index. This uh, measures the level of economic activity in the EU. This measures manufacturing and services activities. So a reading above 50 means that economic activity is expanding. 
a reading below 50 means it's contracting. So as you can see for, for the last three months, PMI uh, data has been contracting. So that shows growth has been slowing in the EU quite uh, substantially. So that may, uh, may provide sufficient justification for the ECB to keep rates on hold. Okay. So we have also PPI data coming up today. You can see PPI has increased as well. This is the headline PPI and this is the core PPI. So to combine with US CPI, which also increased recently, we may see uh, inflation starting to pick up again in the US and that could cause demand for the US dollar to rise as well. All right, and finally, unemployment claims. How do we interpret unemployment claims? Right, unemployment claims basically are the number of people who are filing for unemployment benefits in the US. So if there are more people filing for uh, claims or uh, unemployment benefits, that means the labor market is potentially starting to crack in the US and that means demand for the US dollar should fall because that means the Federal Reserve is not likely to raise rates in the future and may even eventually start cutting rates. So in that scenario, that would cause the US dollar to sell off, that means dollar index will fall and of course the euro will rise and the pound will rise as well. Similarly, if this number comes in lower than the forecast, it's what has happened over the last three weeks. You can see the blue bars are the actual data. The yellow bars are the forecast. So they've been coming in much lower than the forecast. So when it when the actual data comes in lower than the forecast, that means this is positive for uh, the dollar index. So dollar index will rise, gold prices will fall, the euro will fall, and pound is fall. So that's how we can interpret this data. All right. Regarding today's data that's coming up, the forecast is for 226,000 claims. So let's imagine that the data comes in much higher than the forecast. That means there are more people filing for unemployment benefits. So that means this should act as a negative catalyst for the dollar index. Similarly, if this number, if the actual number comes in much lower than the forecast, that means there are less people filing for unemployment benefit. And that means uh, this could potentially act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. All right, now let's just jump into trading view and see how the dollar index uh, traded uh, as CPI data was released yesterday. And then we can also identify some what are the main resistance and support levels for uh, the dollar index, the euro, the pound, as well as for gold. All right. Okay, so here I am on uh, the chart for dollar index and I'm on the four hour time frame. But uh, let's just zoom in into the 30 minute time frame and take a peek at what happened yesterday when the CPI data was released. So you can see here this big spike here, this big 30 minute candle here. Uh, so I'm on GMT time to 13 September, 12.30 PM GMT was when the US CPI data hit the news and you could see it was a very volatile uh, period, right? So even if you zoom in into the five minute chart, let me let's scroll back. So you can see here, this is, here we go, 12.30 p.m. GMT. You can see a big spike uh, in the first candle and the second, third, and fourth. Month. So you can see it was a very volatile uh, period for the dollar index going as high as, what is this, 104.95 and dropping as low as 104.54. So basically, it was a spiking at least 40 pips, the true, the range was ranging from 40 pips or so. So you can see it was a very volatile event because the data came in higher than the forecast and initially spiked higher, but then it just consolidated. There was no follow through this time round. With regards to this CPI's uh, data, uh, there was no real follow through. I, I, but in the previous uh, month's meeting, actually there was a lot of follow through and uh, the dollar index actually continued to rise higher. But for this, uh, for yesterday's data, although the dollar index did, did spike initially because of uh, the higher inflation data, US CPI data came in higher than the forecast, but it actually just consolidated and start, I would say it ranged around, uh, what is this, 104.60 and about 104.80, right? But this time around, it actually didn't, there was no sustained moves to the upside for the dollar index. Right, so now going into uh, today's data with unemployment claims and PPI data, maybe this time around they could 
uh, function as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index, especially if PPI comes in hotter than expected. That means higher than the forecast. And of course, if unemployment, unemployment claims come in lower than the forecast as well. So the combination of higher PPI and lower unemployment claims could put the, potentially act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. All right. Now, how, where are our levels, right? Where are, where are the immediate support and resistance levels for the dollar index? All right. So now we're back on the four-hour chart dollar index. Okay, so you can see here the resistance has been identified at 104.91. Uh, okay, let's zoom in a little bit. All right. Apologies, something's just um, trading me a bit. Chart's not moving the way I wanted to move. Just give me a second while I just get everything, adjust the, the chart and get everything ready. All right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you can see. Uh, the first resistance set is at 104.91, right? Okay, so we've got a uh, price making a swing high here on the 12th of September, as well as this big spike here that we saw yesterday as well, 13th September. So this level here, uh, we've used this level, these two swing highs, as well as a Fibonacci projection as well. So if you can see this part's a bit messy, let me just uh, zoom in a little bit. I'm going to bring the chart down. Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, so if I look at the chart here, we've also used a Fibonacci projection. So how do we get used to some 8.6% Fibonacci projection to help us identify the first resistance? We started with the swing low here on 11 September, going up to the swing high on the 12th of September, and ending with the swing low here on the 12th of September as well. Right, so projection uses three points, one, two, three, and we've used the 78.6% Fibonacci projection level because it lines up pretty well with where the swing high took place on the 12th of September. So that's how we've identified the first resistance level. Now the second resistance level, you can see price making a swing high here on the 27th of September, and then proceeded to trade between 104.80 and 105 for the next couple of days before dropping lower. So that's how we've identified the second resistance at 105.16. Right. Okay. So should PPI data come in higher than the forecast and unemployment claims come in lower than the forecast, that means this we could see a potential uh, rise in the dollar index, pushing up towards the first resistance and potentially breaking through the first resistance and uh, going beyond 105. Right? So do take note of that. That's how we can interpret the data later today. And that's how we, we could see dollar index push beyond the first, potentially push beyond the first resistance. Now, of course, we have to consider the other side as well. So what if PPI data doesn't come in, uh, comes in lower than the forecast and unemployment claims comes in higher than the forecast, that means this is gonna act as a negative catalyst or a bearish catalyst for a dollar index. That means it's quite likely we will see dollar index fall at least towards 104.50 first. And then the first major support for the dollar index comes in comes in at 104.41. Now, how did we identify this level? We can see price making a swing high here on the 25th of August. Right, price making a swing high here on 25th of August. And also uh, coming up close to the 29th of August, making another swing high here as well. So this level has acted as a resistance in the past. And once price breaks above it, it's going to now potentially act as a support, which it did on uh, 11th of September, right? You can see price making another significant bounce here on 11th of September. So we can see three instances where the dollar index has reacted on this level. And that is how we've identified 104.41 as a major overlap support. All right. 
Okay, now with regards to the second support, right? We've used uh the Fibonacci uh extension level as well. So how do we use this Fibonacci extension level? So the extension level. Yes, let me get my cursor back on. Right. So how do we uh I use identify this extension level? We use the retracements tool tool starting from this swing low here on 11 September, ending with a swing high on 12 September, we pulled up the 161% Fibonacci extension level. And this level lies quite close to where this strong overlap level uh, lies at 103.98. Now, why is this a strong overlap level? Let's see. When we go back to 23rd of August, we can see price making a swing high here, running price running into resistance and getting rejected. And then once price broke through it, we can see price finding support here. This level acted as a pullback support before price bounced higher. So you can see two instances where uh, the dollar index has made significant swings. And that is how we've identified 103.98 as a key overlap support for the dollar index on the four hour time frame. All right. So do take note, these are the key levels for the dollar index uh, on the four hour time frame. And do take note of how uh, the upcoming data today in a couple of hours could impact the dollar index. So just to recap, higher PPI data, lower unemployment claims could potentially push dollar index uh, towards 105. Lower PPI data and higher unemployment claims would cause the opposite. So that could potentially cause dollar index to reverse its course and drop towards 104.50. All right. Next, we have... Uh, the euro, we'll take a quick look at the euro. Why? Because as we mentioned earlier, we've seen, we've got a monetary policy state uh, meeting coming up today at 12, 15 p.m. GMT time, which is in about a couple of hours. We're gonna see the ECB announce their refinancing rate as well as release their policy statement. Now, it is widely expected that they are going to keep rates on hold. And if the statement is relatively neutral, combined with President Christine Lagarde's press conference that comes up at 12.45 p.m. If that also, if she comes up with a relatively neutral outlook, this could uh, potentially act uh, or potentially cause the euro to fall, right? Okay, so now let's look at where the euro is currently trading. Let's zoom out a little bit. We can get a little bit better perspective on how it, it has been trading. Right, so if we look, the euro has is, has been uh in this downward bearish channel, right? Since mid July, the uh, demand for the US dollar has been very strong. And we see uh the dollar index rising very strongly since middle of July. And that of course would mean the euro currency such as the euro would be falling and the pound would be falling as well. All right, hi Mike. Okay. What happened? Okay, this uh do take uh do keep an eye out uh for INFX on their YouTube page, this webinar would be uploaded, uh, I would say by the by early next week. I would say by early next week, this webinar uh, would be uploaded onto INFX YouTube page. So do keep an eye out for it. All right, that's how uh, you can get access to the recorded webinar for today. All right. Okay, so coming back to the, the Euro. Right, so we see Euro has been... Uh, sort of ranging between 1.0690 and 1.0773 between these two levels here since um, 7th of September, since last week, right? So it's been ranging somewhere roughly between this zone. So with the, uh, you, the with US dollar looking relatively strong today, and we could see the Euro drop, potentially drop towards the first support at 1.0690. Now remember, if the ECB does not raise rates, they keep it on hold. And we also see a relatively neutral uh, statement as well as a neutral press conference. This could cause the euro to fall, especially if uh, we see US PPI data come in higher than forecast. And of course, unemployment claims come in lower than forecast. So you could have like a combination of all these economic news events that could drive the euro much lower at least towards the first uh, support at 1.0698. All 
Okay, second support for the euro has been identified at this pullback level here that took place on 31st of March, March which is, oh, sorry, 31st of May, which is at 1.0635. You can see price making a very significant swing here. You can see price falling from uh, the start of May all the way down, big downtrend for the euro, and finally hitting this level here and bouncing up higher. So you can see price has made a significant swing bounce here was significant swing low here. That is how we've identified 1.0634 as a major pullback support level for the euro. All right, now coming back to where price is currently trading. All right, currently looking back at where price is currently trading. Uh, okay, so do take note, these are the immediate support levels for the euro. And to the upside, we can see a nice pullback uh, overlap resistance level here as well, which is at 1.0773, right? How is this a uh, key uh, overlap resistance level, right? We can see price making a significant bounce here on 25th of August. You can also see price making another bounce here on 2nd September before finally breaking through. And of course, after that, you can see price sort of uh, make another swing high here as well uh, earlier this week. So right, so you can see three instances where the euro has reacted off this level quite strongly. So hence, this is how we've identified 1.0773 as the first major overlap resistance for the euro. And also we use the Fibonacci retracement tool starting from this swing high here on 30th of August, going down to the swing low on 7th September. And when we pull up all the Fibonacci levels, we pull up 38% and 61%. We can see that they line up very well with the overlap resistance as well. So similarly to the second resistance, we see price making a significant bounce here back in uh, 29th of June, as well as here on 6th of July. So two instances where price has bounced off this level pretty strongly and hence, that's how we've identified this level at 1.0837 as the overlap, as a significant overlap resistance that also aligns with the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level. All right, okay. Um, right, so that's what we have for the euro. All right, so let's look now at uh, pound as well. So similarly, if the dollar index has been rising strongly over the last eight, uh, since July, so about eight weeks now or more, we can also expect the pound to have been falling over this period as well, which is what we see clearly on the charts. Right, okay. Um, right, so let's try and identify where some of the levels for the pound could be. All right, okay. So this is a fresh chart, clean charts of the do the analysis together. All right, in terms of the first support, right, I see Oh, okay. Oh, it took a while to load. I need, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I had done the analysis before. Okay, all right. Okay, here we go. Sorry, it took a while to load. But all right. But we'll still run through the analysis together, of course. All right, so if you look at the first support, which is at 1.2448, right, this uh, has been identified by this overlap level here. You can see price uh, reacting off this level as a support and resistance multiple times. We've also used the Fibonacci extension level at 127%. How did we find this extension level? If we go back here, and we use a Fibonacci retracement starting from this uh, swing low on 29th of June, ending with a swing high here on 14th of July, we can see price making a nice Nike tick or an inverse Nike tick. So when you see price falling down strongly like this, we can use the extension levels to help us identify major support and uh, all resistance areas. So in this case, we are looking for a major support area. So this 127 extension level lines up very squarely with this overlap support here as well. And if we go back, come forward to where price is currently trading in September, you can see the power has bounced off this level, 1.2448, uh, three times pretty strongly. So that's how we've identified this strong overlap support for the power. Now, of course, if uh, the data comes in favor for the US dollar, we're definitely going to see, uh, well, not definitely, we are very likely 
to see the pound at least test this first support level and potentially break through it as well. So if it does break through it, the next major support for the pound comes in at 1.2372. And that's, if we go back here to May, you can see price making a significant resistance and significant swing bounce as well here, right? You can see price making a swing high here, a small swing rather, and then after that, making a pretty decent bounce here on the 1st of June, and then another significant bounce here on the 5th of June as well. Right, so we can see a very nice overlap level here, which should offer a significant support for the pound should the first support be broken. Right, okay. Now, when we look at on the resistance side, you can see since uh, Tuesday, price has not been able to break above 1.25. So this is where we've identified this level as an intermediate resistance. Right? It's just a small pullback level here. So it's not, we don't want to label it as a, a major overlap resistance because it's just a small, tiny pullback, which could potentially offer some resistance should price come back up here. Now, the first major resistance is this overlap level. Here we can see price making a swing high here in June once more, early June, price making a swing high here. And then after price making a bounce here in end of August, as well as early September here. And of course, more recently this week, price running into resistance here as well on Monday. Right, so we can see multiple instances once again where price has reacted off the first resistance at 1.2533. And that is why we've identified it as the first major resistance. Now, okay, with regards to that, we've also used a Fibonacci retracement uh, on this leg of the move from this swing high here on 6 September, ending with a swing low on 7 September. We can see that the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level lines up very well with the overlap at 1.2533. So this adds significance to uh, this overlap resistance. Now, the second overlap resistance is at 1.2603. And if we zoom out a little bit, we can see price making a very significant bounce here as well. So this is, this is a very significant low here. And we can see price bouncing very strongly off 1.2590 uh, back in back at the end of June. So when you see big price movements like this and swings, then this level here could potentially act as a major support level. And you can argue that that's what it did on the 3rd of August, as well as on the 14th of August. You can see price coming very close to this uh, pullback support here, and then uh, retreating away from it. But of course, it eventually broke through and uh, went lower. Regardless, we can still see how that this level could potentially, what was previously a major support level could now potentially act as a major resistance level. Okay, so this is how we've identified the first, uh, the, the second overlap resistance for the pound. All right, okay. Now with uh, dollar index, of course, rising very strongly, let's look at how gold has been trading. Right, so we can see, uh, of course, we all know that uh, gold prices and the US dollar have a negative correlation. What do we mean by that? So that means if the value of the US dollar is rising, we can expect gold prices to be falling. And if the value of the US dollar is falling, we can expect gold, rises, the gold prices to be rising. So that's what it means. Uh, what, that's what we mean when we say Gold and the US dollar have a negative correlation. So now generally, once again, since uh, middle of July, the dollar index has been very strong, it's gained uh, over the last eight weeks. So that generally acts as a very bearish uh, catalyst for the dollar, in, uh, for the gold prices, which what we can clearly see here for 20th of July all the way to 17th of August. And, we, and as well as since recently, since the start of September, with demand for the US dollar coming, picking up again. So that means dollar index is rising. So of course, we've seen uh, gold prices make this significant swing high here at 1,950 and has continued to trend lower. Now, if the US dollar 
uh, continues to rise higher today, then of course gold prices are more than likely to fall at least towards the first support at 1,900. Now, how did we identify this first support level? We have several factors, right? We do see um, price making a significant swing here back in uh, the end of June, right? And then in early July as well, price making another swing bounce here and a tiny swing bounce here in the middle of August as well. So we can see multiple instances where price has bounced off this level. So that's how we've identified it as a key support level. And also it lines up with the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement level as well. So we did this retracement starting from the swing low, 17th of, of August going up to the swing high on the 1st of September. We can see that the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement level lines up pretty close to where the overlap level was identified. And not only that, we've also used the Fibonacci projection level. So this projection uses three points. So it started from this swing high here, 1st September, going down to the second point with this swing low 6th six, six September and ending with uh, this recent swing high here on the 11th of September. So we see the projection level at 78.6% also lined up uh, very well with the 78.6% retracement level and this pullback level as well. So we have several factors that has helped us to identify this first overlap support, which is a key significant area. Now, the second uh, support for gold comes in at 18,888. And this is very obvious because we can see price making a very significant swing low here and a strong bounce on uh, 18, 17, 18th of August to move higher, right? So you can see very strong price action here, right? Gold prices falling very rapidly. And then when it hit 18,000, uh, 880 back in mid-August, it bounced pretty strongly as well. Well, we've seen a very strong, strong significant swing here for gold prices, and that's how we've identified 18,888 as a major overlaps, uh, as a major swing low support for gold prices. Now, to the upside, we can see uh, prices uh, reacting of 1,913, right? so that's how we've used that level to help us identify uh, a major overlap resistance. And as, as you can see for this week as well, gold prices have failed to break above 1913, which more or less helps us to uh, reaffirm the significance of this first overlap resistance. Now, the second overlap resistance can also be seen where uh, with a lot of significant swing bounces and swing uh, highs as well. So this is how we've identified 1930 as the second overlap resistance or second major overlap resistance, right? Okay, so this is what we have for gold prices. Now, um, let's take a quick look. All right, well, let's take a quick look at, um, let's see, uh, yeah, let's take a, right, guys, uh, if you have any uh, particular currency pattern you would like me to have a look at, or the crosses, or any of the indices as well, do let me know, I'd be more than happy to uh, go through the analysis with you as well, or if you have any questions uh, regarding the upcoming economic data and how it could impact currency markets or the gold prices, do let me know as well. I'll be happy to go through uh, all this with you as well. All right, so moving back to uh, trading view. Right, so now when we look at uh, the chart for WTI oil, and you can see oil has been, has bounced very strongly after making the swing low here on 24th of August, right? And if you zoom out a little bit, we'll just go into the daily time frame. You can see since uh, the end of June, crude prices have uh, risen very strongly, right? We see uh, WTI oil going from $68 per barrel to as high as $84 uh, per barrel in a very short time. This is primarily due to increased demand in the US as well. 
uh, combined with production cuts by led by Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia as well. So when you have big OPEC members with Saudi, like Saudi Arabia and Russia cutting their production supplies, that means there's less supply coming into the market while demand remains relatively stable or demand growing. This would then cause crude prices to rise higher. Right? So this is what we are seeing currently and it looks to be extending as we speak. All right, so you can see since uh, early July, so almost now six weeks, coming to almost nearly six weeks, we've seen crude oil prices in a strong bullish trend, and WTI looks to be potentially uh, touching $90 by the end of this week. Right, so now let's head back, zoom in into the four-hour time frame, and let's try and identify some of the major support and resistance levels, and how did we come to identify them? All right, okay, so, um, okay, let's talk about resistance because that's where price is currently breaking or attempting to break above. And the first resistance is at 88.71. It was identified by uh, by a couple of factors. One is using this Fibonacci retracement on this swing high here from 10th of August going down to the swing low on 24th of August. We used the 161% Fibonacci extension level to help us identify this resistance level. And if we zoom out a little bit and go back to, I believe, is uh, November of 2022, right? You can see price making a significant swing high here for WTI oil. So when price has made a, a significant swing high here in the past, this could now potentially act as a major resistance, right? So we do see uh, WTI oil attempting to break out of this. It, it has proved to be a pretty significant resistance level because uh, since Monday, when WTI oil hit $89 per barrel, it's failed to break out of this level, but finally, it does appear to be breaking out convincingly today, right? So we can see how the combination of a significant swing high back in November of 2022, plus this Fibonacci extension at 161%, can help us identify a major uh, resistance level for crude oil or for WTI oil in particular. And we can see that play out this week as well. Very clearly, it's, it has offered major resistance for crude prices before now, uh, attempting to finally break above it. Now, how, what about the second resistance? Second resistance has been identified by using a Fibonacci projection. We're using the 78.6% Fibonacci projection. How did we come about? How did this come about? So projection uses three points. So we started with, remember the swing low here that took place in end of June, when the uh, WTI all started its very strong bullish run. Going up to the second point, make, making the swing high here on the 10th of August. And then finally, uh, after it made the swing low on 24th of August, we had one, two, three points. So that's how we use the Fibonacci projection tool to help us identify the 78.6% Fibonacci projection level. All right, so that's how we have the resistance levels for WTI oil. Now, if you look on the support side, and right, let's zoom in a little bit now and look at the support side, we have this price level here at 87.47. You can see price making a pretty, uh, running into resistance here back in early September. You can see about four times uh, WTI oil tested this level before it eventually broke out. So this acted as a pretty significant uh, pullback resistance back then. And now that price has broken out, this should offer a pretty decent support level, pullback support for WTI oil as well. Now the first major overlap support for WTI oil will come in at this overlap support at 85.58. We can see here price running into resistance on early September. And then in the second week of September, or towards the end of the first week of September, price finding support. And this level lines up pretty well with the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement as well. Oh, okay, now the price has broken higher. Actually, this was valid uh, yesterday. Now with price breaking higher. All right, okay, we're not going to use, because price is continuing to go higher. It's not made a swing high here, an obvious swing high here, so we can't use this. Uh, Fibonacci retracement anymore. But in the past, it did act, we did use it to help us identify a 
uh, the first overlap support zone. Uh, but we're going to get rid of this retracement now because it's no longer valid price attempting to make a new high. And of course, we can get rid of this uh, zone as well now. Right. Okay. So with regards to the first overlap support, it is at 85.58. You can see uh, price respecting this level as resistance and support. Now, the second support is this significant swing high that took place in um, mid-August, right? You can see a significant swing here take place. So this is now, uh, this is how we've identified the second support level, and this is going to be a, potentially a major pullback level for uh, WTI oil at 84.30. All right. Okay, so this is what we have for crude. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, okay, there's a question by Mike. How about uh, gold swing trading for three, six months trending? All right, okay. If you go back to gold in terms of um, there no swings, okay, potentially, okay, let the chart load up again. Okay, let's just tidy up, uh, get rid of some of the annotations here. All right, okay, when it comes to like uh, gold swing trading, I will switch on to the daily time frame, but that's uh, better as well because then we're able to try and potentially identify the major swings. And let's add in some, some other retracement levels as well. I say not, not retracement, but uh, let's add in some other indicators as well to help us uh, identify potential swings, right? We're going to use Bollinger Bands as well as uh, our, our Stochastic as well. Because you can see what it is. All right, okay. So here we are on the daily time frame for uh, gold. All right, as I said, we're going to add in a couple of more indicators. We're going to use one of them would be Bollinger Bands. And of course, we're going to add in uh, stochastic as well. So just give me a second while we select all the relevant. Um, yeah, okay. And then we're going to look at stochastic as well. Let's go down. We can, we can get rid of, you know, the RSI. Right, okay. So... Right, okay, with regards to uh, stochastic Bollinger uh, and Bollinger, the parameters that we're using it is uh, for Bollinger, just the default inputs, right? So, no changes there. Pull it up. Right, All right so 20 uh, for the length, for the moving average, two for the standard de deviation, so nothing uh, special there. Just the standard parameters for Bollinger Bands. For stochastics, now you can either save it as 21 or 20. This is what I generally use, 21, 3, 3. These are the general parameters. These are the parameters that I usually use for stochastic. Right, okay, so now, um, if we go to the chart, you can see when, okay, I'm also going to put in uh, some levels here so we can see generally when the stochastic has hit uh 92 so 90 and above generally that's when we've seen uh potentially gold prices uh reverse and when we see stochastic and about um, yeah at about two or three let's change this to green that's when we see the uh bottom potential bottom in uh, gold prices as well. So now I'm going to line this all up with vertical lines. So here we go. So this is the most recent one was here. So let's just change this to red. Right. So just uh, if we look at on 4th September, we can see price, uh, gold prices um, 
coming very close to the upper band of the Bollinger Band, right? The upper bound of the Bollinger Band. And you can also see stochastic making a relatively high reading of, uh, what is this? 82, right? 85, 82, not coming exactly as high as 92, where price, where stochastic has hit before, but it came very close to that and started to reverse. So when you see price action such as this and uh, indicated and price hitting or coming very close to the upper bound of the Bollinger Band, as well as the stochastics coming very high to 90, 90 and 92. Potentially, that's where we could see a potential reversal in gold prices as well. Similarly, now if you look for the, uh, for the bullish reversal, right? Let's just highlight this in green, right? So you can see here, Let's just switch this up to green. Right. So here on uh, mid of August, you can see stochastics dropping below three, indicating potentially uh, very oversold positions. We can also see uh, gold prices pushing uh, towards the lower bound of the Bollinger Band before consolidating at about 18,880 or 18,000. 90 before reversing to go higher. So when you see price action pushing down against the Bollinger Band on a daily time frame, and you see stochastics uh, being overly sold, being under three, this is potentially indicating uh, a bottom for gold prices. Similarly, now if I draw your attention to this date here on 20th of July, set this up and highlight this in green. Oh, sorry, in red, right? You can see price breaking above the Bollinger Band here, the upper bound of the Bollinger Band. And you can also see stochastics making very, uh, very uh, entering rather very oversold positions, right? Hitting 90, 92 and above. So when you have instances like this for gold, generally uh, it helps us to identify the potential turning points or the swings, right? So we, if you go back, in time, you can see that this place doesn't play out every single time. Of course, I do have to stress that this doesn't play out every single time, but it does help us to identify a pretty decent swing point uh, for gold prices, right? So just to recap, we are on the daily time frame, right? You use the Bollinger Bands, uh, standard inputs, no changes to that. Use stochastic, uh, parameters that I like to use are 21 or 20 and 3 and 3 for the smoothing parameters. And do take note, whenever stochastic comes up close to 90 and above, or uh, and when it comes close to 3 and below, is potentially indicating a turning point for gold prices as well. And also together with where price is pushing against the Bollinger Bands as well. Right? So this is uh, something that you can use to help you identify major turning points or reversals for gold prices. All right. Okay. So we've come to the end of uh, today's webinar. Right. Okay. Do take note of the key events that are coming up today. Right. We've got ECB uh, with their monetary policy meeting in about an hour and 20 minutes. And then the press conference at 12.45 p.m. GMT. We've also got PPI data and unemployment claims in the U.S. So all of these could act as a potential uh, bullish catalyst for the dollar index and potentially drive the euro lower, gold prices lower as well. All right, I'm just going to launch a poll as well. Truly appreciate it if you guys can uh, uh, give your feedback as well. Do rate, give the rating and uh, yep, just let me know. And if you have, and do look out for any other, do register for any upcoming uh, webinars by RNFX and all uh, live webinars will be pre will be recorded or well are recorded and will be uploaded to iron to the YouTube page for RNFX. All right, all right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if there's no further questions, then uh, yeah, just like to wish you all good luck with your training this week and do take note of the key economic events that are coming up, uh, today, and how they could potentially impact currency markets as well as uh, gold prices as well as uh, crude. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I uh, hope this has been a great session and good luck for the rest of the trading week.
All right. Thanks, everyone. And I'll catch you guys at the next webinar.